Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who looks upon us with compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. In the world, we are reminded that we are human and fall short in our sin. In Christ's death, we see how selfless he was to die for our salvation. In his resurrection, we receive that eternal forgiveness. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. To you, our Creator, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us as we share your life. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ our Savior. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen.
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It is 
he hung a label on me that has lasted for years. <laughs> to this day, my high school classmates don't refer to me as George. They call me Ace. <laughs> for centuries, Thomas had carried a label, has carried a label, old doubting Thomas. It's certainly not a flattering label, is it? Generations of Christians haven't seen fit to label Peter. They don't refer to him as denying Peter. They don't refer to him as sinking Peter because of his failed attempt to walk on water. Christians have cut Peter some slack. But Christians have cut Thomas no slack. I don't like that he's been labeled Doubting Thomas for all of history just because he asked for evidence, just because he had the nerve to ask for proof of Jesus' resurrection after seeing him brutalized and tortured and then crucified. In our Gospel lesson we learned that Thomas was not with the other disciples when Jesus appeared to them and said, Peace be with you. The other disciples, including sinking Peter, didn't need proof because they saw Jesus in the locked room and heard Jesus speak. Thomas wasn't in the locked room, nor was he present at Jesus' empty tomb. He didn't hear Jesus call his name. Mary heard her name being called by Jesus, but Thomas did not. Unlike Forrest Gump, Thomas had a habit of being conspicuously absent when it came to big events. We can only speculate where Thomas was and what he might have been doing when Jesus came to the disciples at the house. Our text does not give us any clues. Perhaps Thomas was praying at a secluded spot. Perhaps he was wandering around town trying to gather information. Perhaps he was tending to some personal matters. Perhaps he had gone out to get snacks for the group. We don't know. We don't know why Thomas wasn't with the other <laughs> disciples when Jesus appeared. But when Thomas comes back to the house, the others tell him this fantastic story. And Thomas had questions. Thomas seeks evidence. Thomas wants proof. It's not like there were resurrections every day, you know. Every time we read about Thomas and we pass judgment on him because he doubted, we ignore the fact that all of us can be just like Thomas. You might not choose to admit it, but regardless of how strong our faith might be, there are times in our lives when we would love some proof that the story is real, that the risen Jesus sees us, that the risen Jesus speaks to us, that the risen Jesus cares about us, that the risen Jesus is actively involved in our lives. In this story, if we focus on Thomas's doubt, us Thomas clones can miss the most important message in this story. And that message is, Jesus shows up. When Jesus shows up in our lives, Jesus may not look how we had anticipated. When Jesus shows up in our lives, Jesus may not sound or feel how we had anticipated. When Jesus shows up in our lives, Jesus could appear at any time or any place or in any form, but Jesus shows up. No doubt about it. Jesus is going to bust through some closed doors bust out of closed spaces in which we've boxed him. Whenever or wherever this takes place, Jesus is going to call out our names, not our nicknames or our labels, and he's going to invite us to come close and really see.
touch and feel. So, when you are riddled with doubt and you start to question your faith, when you're waiting for Jesus to show up, don't beat yourself up. Don't come to the conclusion that you're a terrible person or a phony. Having doubts is a normal thing and a human thing. Be kind to yourself. There was a man who had doubts about his faith for years and he finally decided to have a conversation with his elderly father about it. After listening to his son pour his heart out to him, the father said, Remember, son, a smart person always has doubts about something. Only a total idiot is 100% sure about everything. The son replied, Dad, are you sure? And the father answered, Absolutely. <laughs> I had a pause there. That was kind of one of those you might have to think about. It. It's important to note that when Jesus shows up and Thomas no longer doubts, Jesus doesn't let Thomas have it. Jesus doesn't berate Thomas. He doesn't say, Thomas, why can't you believe? He doesn't say, why couldn't you take Peter's word for it? Jesus doesn't condemn Thomas. Instead, Jesus offers Thomas the evidence he had sought. John Wesley was a leader of a revival movement within the Church of England that became known as Methodism. The societies he founded became the dominant form of the independent Methodist movement that continues to this day. And John Wesley was an ordained minister in the Church of England, and he struggled with doubts. He was afraid that he didn't believe enough. He was afraid that his faith wasn't enough. He was afraid he really didn't have faith. And finding himself in this state, he thought that maybe he should stop preaching. But a friend named Peter Bowler gave Wesley some sage advice. Preach faith until you have faith, Bowler told him. And then, because you have faith, you will preach faith. Translated, Bowler told Wesley to pretend to have faith until he got faith. When Jesus says to Thomas, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe, he's not so much talking to Thomas as he is talking to those of us looking over Thomas' shoulder. He's speaking to us, uttering a blessing to us that we too can come to believe even though we have not seen. We can doubt but if we keep acting out of loyal allegiance to God, faith will follow. If we act as if we have faith, it will be granted to us. When we're facing doubts, when we're facing uncertainty, when we're asking, do I really believe or am I just going through the motions? Act as if you have faith and it will be granted to you. But while you're acting, while you're waiting for faith to be granted to you, my prayer is that the peace of God may be with you. Christ offered that peace to his disciples. He offered that peace to Thomas, who had his doubts. And labels or nicknames notwithstanding, he offers it to us as well.
your own work of forgiving the sins of all who are humble enough to seek forgiveness and grace. Give us the faith, hope, and charity to believe, worship, and obey you always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, come with your forgiveness, grace, and peace to the people of this congregation. Make them hunger for your word and thirst for your goodness. Help them to serve you by serving others in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, breathe the Holy Spirit upon skeptics, doubters, and all whose confidence in your grace has been shaken by tragedy. Use us to lead them gently into your house. Transform their unbelief into unshakable faith in you. Lord, in your mercy. We are here. Our prayer. Lord Jesus, give the leaders of the nations and all people entrusted to their care that peace which the world cannot give. Let repentant faith and deeds of mercy bring the light of your saving love to hearts darkened by the powers of sin, evil, and death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, teach us to be your disciples, seeking out and walking with others even when they despair of your love. Give us grace to be gentle and patient as we invite them to taste and see your goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, Bring the peace of your forgiveness, the healing of your dear touch, and the joy of your salvation to all whose lives are shadowed by suffering of body, mind, or soul, especially Mary Ann, Wanda, Danny, Andy, Leroy, Darv, Ronnie, Wayne, Jim, Jane, David, Bonnie, Wayne, Tom, Jane, and the family of Lois Rank. And those we remember aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Cheer their hearts, renew their faith, and restore them to fellowship with all who love them. Grant that all whom you have redeemed may see your face, see you face to face, and cry out in adoration and joy, my Lord and my God. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus, continue to bless your children who are celebrating birthdays. Carol, Steve, Katie, Carly, as well as anniversaries, including Dave and Denise Moorhart. May the Holy Spirit continue to walk with them on a path that will lead them closer to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your Father's hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in his mercy through you, his only Son, and our Lord. Amen. And now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go with joy in the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.